I was recently talking to one of my subscribers on Discord who wanted feedback about their t-shirt design and I uh, gave them a few tips and pointers of uh, what to do differently or how I would design the t-shirt and I thought why not put this into a video because if I tell you my, my thought process with t-shirt designs and also show you how I would redesign them then you could maybe learn something from that and help improve your t-shirt design quality as well. So let me know what you think of this sort of video if you want me to do more in the future and if you've got a t-shirt design that you want me to review or give you some tips about then just join the Discord server in the description. You can also send me a direct message on there so you don't have to share your t-shirt design with everyone else and then I might consider it for a future video of redesigning subscribers t-shirts. So first of all we're going to take a look at the t-shirt in question which I've got a screenshot of right here. I don't think by any means that this is a bad design, I just think that there is improvements that can be made to increase the likelihood of it selling. I think this is a, a decent design, you can definitely get sales with this, but I'm quickly going to walk you through what I think. First of all, the positives, uh, I think some of the graphics are really nice, like the axolotl looks very suitable for Halloween, and the pumpkin graphic also looks really cool. On top of that, I like the creativity in terms of the spiders, for example, which are hanging off the letters, which is a cool idea. And then the shape of the design is also really nice. If I draw a uh, rectangle over this, for example, and uh, change this to a stroke, you can see that this is a very nice, neat, tall rectangle, which is a, a great practice for t-shirt design uh, to fill out the entire print area and to have a design that actually stands out in search results. And a few issues that I wanted to point out for the design that I want to improve on are first of all the hierarchy. Now what do I mean by hierarchy? Basically if you look at this design where do your eyes first go to? And I'm guessing for most people it's going to be a different answer because there is no real hierarchy that shows you what you should be looking at. For example, the text is all very evenly sized and there's no emphasis on any specific words that uh, would, would tell you what the design is about very quickly. Once I redesign this shirt, you'll see how to do this differently. And also the graphics are, well, very abundant. There is a lot of them, which makes it hard to know which piece of graphic is like the important part of the design. And they're also very evenly sized. Um, the axolotl is slightly bigger and it's in the middle, which is which is a good thing, but everything else is also a bit convoluted and distracting from the main fact of this design, which is the axolotl. And yeah, colors is another thing. There is tons of different colors in here. We've got the, the purple and pink going on with the axolotl. We've got some brown owls. We've got green right here with the cauldron, then different oranges, like the pumpkin is very strong in orange and the text at the bottom is more faded. So it makes for a color scheme which is a bit all over the place, which once again makes the design harder to process, just like the hierarchy. If, if someone is scrolling through the results on Amazon, like the, the search results, and the design is not very clear within a second, then they're just going to scroll past to the next one, which is easier to read and decipher. So that's why that's important. And legibility is, uh, yeah, another key thing here, where I am an axolotl, whilst the font has a cool pattern in it, it definitely hurts the legibility. Like I can barely read this if we zoom out. Uh, some of the letters are also dark, like a, a dark brown or gray sort of color, which on a black background is not very easy to read. And the top text, while it has a better contrast, it's white against black, is a very thin font. This one is also quite spaced out, so uh, it is a bit hard to read what the actual t-shirt says which once again is not a good idea if someone is quickly scrolling through their phone and they can't really make out what the, the text on your t-shirt says. So now we've come to the part where I will actually redesign this t-shirt and the first step is going to be just typing out this text right here with the type tool. So now that that's done, you can see I've already split the sentence up into different parts. And the reason for this is that now I'm going to change the size of the most important words within this sentence. Uh, to show you what the emphasis should be on. Because first of all, we've got human costume, which is literally the niche, right? It's a, a very popular Halloween t-shirt to wear, where it says human costume. And the second most important part in the design is the animal, the axolotl. And that's going to be another main reason why people buy this t-shirt, is because they like axolotls. The other bits of the text, like this is my, and I am an, are 
still important to the sentence, but they're not something that you need the customer to see right away. So that's why they are probably going to be smaller in our design. And I will lay this out in a way so that we can have the axolotl right here under the human costume part, because then we're also grouping the two sections of the sentence of this is my human costume and I am an axolotl. For example, what we wouldn't want to do is uh, split this up in this way, where it says, this is my human. Then we've got the sentence interrupted by a graphic and then it carries on with costume I'm an axolotl because that's really hard to read. Right, for the next step, I'm going to change the fonts of this design to make it, first of all, suit the axolotl a bit better, which is sort of a, a fun, cute animal. So we will look for a font that's uh, along those lines or those characteristics. And we also want to pick something that's very readable and somewhat related to the Halloween theme as well. Right, so I think I've found two fonts right here which work quite well together. Uh, this font specifically, because it's so bold, it has that fun feel to it and it's a, a groovy font which is very popular this year the way that it's sized up quite big makes it easy to or easy enough to read and then the other font is a, a different style which is always good to have a bit of contrast between the fonts and not use very similar ones now i'm going to find some graphics to use in the middle right here so i'm going to be using this file that i found on vexels not the entire thing but if i ungroup this i will just take out the axolotl riding a broomstick with the witch's hat which is quite suitable for a halloween axolotl design and this has to be sized down a bit to fit into the middle right here i wouldn't make it too small like uh, this for example is uh, quite small and there's not much focus on the actual animal itself uh, let's make this a bit bigger and overlap the text which is totally fine it can overlap the text a bit as long as it's still readable so if you zoom out and you can still very clearly make out what the text says, then that shouldn't be a problem. If you like covering up an entire letter, uh, then that's basically not the right way to lay out your design because you want your customers to be able to read everything. So now we've got the problem that we've got a lot of empty space right here on the left and right hand side of our axolotl. And I think uh, to fix this, I'm just going to add some pumpkin graphics into there because that always works for Halloween, right? Uh, just adding some pumpkins. And yeah, that way we just fill the design out a bit and give it a more coherent shape. And I will take these graphics from this Halloween set, which once again was found on Vexels. I quite like this design right here for pumpkin. Drag that into our main file. We can put one either side. I'll just use Control Shift and uh, open bracket to move this down to the, to the bottom layer. So it is behind our axolotl. Move it over here, then use O which is the reflection tool to quickly drag this while holding shift and uh, yeah, turn it around. So we've got it more symmetrical. So now we've got this filled out a little bit better. I think I will now also add a little bit of a box around the I am N. Um, I've, I've resized this a little bit, but it's still um, not very, very square-ish. Uh, there's a, too many gaps for me. I want it to be a bit more more uh, geometric. So basically what I'm going to do is use the rectangle tool and I will select uh, this box right here, which says draw behind. So uh, the rectangle is behind our letters and drawing this out. I mean, it would help if I changed the color to something like, I don't know, green, just so we can see what's going on for now. And um, to make this a bit more appealing, I'm going to give it some spikes here at the end. So use the pen tool, wait for it to line up with the center right there. That's the, um, the smart guides helping you, which you can find in view smart guides. Yeah, once you've found the center right there, just click, use the direct selection tool, select that one anchor point you've just created and drag it in a little bit. And we can do the same on the other side with the pen tool. Once again, just click once you've found the middle and draw this in a little bit like so. Right, I do like that a bit better. Now I'm going to change the color of that new box to uh, maybe pink, we'll, we'll color match the axolotl. That's always a good practice with design is to actually match uh, text or, or color schemes within your design to one another rather than just coming up with tons and tons of different colors in one design. So now that we've got that, I think the text will look better if it was black. So use the eyedropper tool to just pick the background. And um, if you want this cut out of the shape so that the, the t-shirt color shines through 
you can do that by just selecting both the text and the box, head over to the Pathfinder window, then hold down Alt on your keyboard and click minus front. That's another neat little tip, which will enable you to also change the text afterwards. Let's say if we want to say IMA, then you draw this over and it is still cut out from the, from the box, which is really handy. I'll also change this text up here to that pink color that we used, or maybe maybe the lighter pink. You could also give this a bit of an arch with envelope distort by just selecting the type, head over to object, envelope distort, make with warp, and then turn this down a tad, hit OK. And I think that's added a, a tiny bit more interest to the design rather than just only having straight text. And now I think the last step that I'm going to take is, uh, first of all, I want to group the pumpkins with the axolotl. So select them all, hit Control G. That's going to help us align everything. Then I will typically draw this over, hold down Alt, select everything, drag it over, just to save this design style for later, because you might want to create other similar designs, uh, because now we're going to outline everything. So select your entire design, hit object, expand appearance, uh, expand again, and with object and fill selected, if we hit OK, everything turns into a shape, which is then easier to align. Once again, this is grouped, this is grouped, which is great, and our individual text items are all grouped. So now if you select everything, and make sure this is all aligned to artboard. Then we can hit horizontal align to center. As we can see uh, with the before and after, some of this was quite wonky. So now we've got it more centrally aligned. Select everything once again, and we can see by the bounding box that this is all very neatly within a rectangle. There's a bit of white space here in some areas uh, where there's no design elements, but that's fine. You don't need to like totally plastic design with objects. I think this is uh, just about enough. It's easier to read if we compare it now to our design before. It's a bit more clear what the intention is uh, because white text right here is the, the highest contrast to a black t-shirt, human costume and axolotl. And then secondary uh, items of text are in pink and a bit smaller. So yeah, I'm, I'm not saying this is a perfect design by the way. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, there's, there's better ways to design this. I just think that we definitely made improvements on the old design, made it easier to read, uh, gave it some hierarchy, reduced some of the graphical elements to just the most important bits, and therefore heavily increased the possibility of people not only noticing the t-shirt, but also clicking at it and potentially buying it, which is obviously everyone's goal. So I hope this was able to help you. And if you have any suggestions of what I should have done differently, feel free to also let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to improve your t-shirt design further, then I'd highly recommend checking out this video next, where I share nine Adobe Illustrator tools with you that will help you create better t-shirts.